very much. I'm very happy to present today uh, to TSB. I'm Garance Gourdel, a PhD student supervised by uh, Pierre Pidolongo and Tatiana Stryskovskaya. And this is a joint paper with Travis Gaghi and Giovanni Manzini. And uh, probably my presentation will be a bit shorter than planned. So, uh, and I imagine there won't be a lot of questions. So I'll take my time anyway. This is a presentation on HBW and resets, and I've gave it a subtitle that is taking advantage of the read alignment to obtain better compression. The start point is the FM index, uh, which is a data structure based on DPWT that both compresses and index the input. It's a in short aligner, uh, read aligner, short read aligner such as Bowtie and BWA. And uh, it has been recently improved to support O of R space R to be the number of runs in the BWT, as I think Travis mentioned. And goes to operation count P uh, in the complexity of the size of the pattern P and locate in P uh, plus the number of occurrence. And so all the compression in space is based on the number of runs in the, in the BWT. And uh, if we take an example that is going to be our uh, running example in this presentation, it's get a get a get. Uh, if we do it has eight runs. And the question we have is, could we have the same type of structure uh, that would have similar performance based on the uh, number of runs in the BWT or the EBWT or the XBWT? And also, how can we have the minimum, uh, the uh, small, smallest possible number of runs without going into optimization, just uh, thinking about this as the goal. Then uh, a first idea to build an FM in for the reads that is kind of the naive approach where we could uh, concatenate the reads with just dollar as a separator and um, is, and then build the FM index on the entire string. So in our example, this gives us this string where all those uh, reads are gata, taga, 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 uh, gatak, and atagat that are going to be the, the reads we always take in our examples. And if we build the BWT, we have 20 runs. And the issue with this approach is that computing the BWT for such a long string is challenging and also the context before dollar doesn't really make sense. So if we have uh, two uh, suffixes of two reads with the same uh, prefixes, then maybe it doesn't make as much sense uh, to compare before the dollar. So the number of runs, uh, uh, the, the, the dollars in the BWT actually break some runs, just as here that you can see. And um, so might not be optimal. Then there is the EBWT, which stands for the extended bars where you permute all the characters in the string into the lexicographic order of the suffixes that immediately follow them, considering each string to be cyclic. And we take always the same example, the same reads, and uh, we get this uh, result this extended bow solar transform with 19 run. And the good thing is with this approach is because we consider each string to be cyclic, we don't have the entire string, so it's easier to build and to update than the naive approach. But the problem we have is that all those reads are taken from uh, this uh, original string at a cat, and still the uh, number of runs in the EBWT is more than twice the number of runs we, or we originally had on the strings, that was eight. So we can also talk about the heuristic uh, to in to the reads to get a better compression of the EBWT. There is first the reorganizing of the reads in reverse lexicographic order or collexicographic order. And uh, if we do that, we actually found the same thing as before because they were already in um, uh, reverse lexicographic order. 
and uh, so 19 run. Then there is Spring, which is a separate software that attempts to uh, reorder the reads according to their position in the genome. Um, that without having a position in the genome, as uh, guessing uh, some position in the genome. And in this case, it does worse than uh, the original uh, RLO uh, EBWT we had. Um, then there is a separate stru uh, data structure known the its BWT for extended BWT. Um, that is a generalization of uh, the Bose Willow transform for label trees, where the characters get sorted on uh, according to the level of their outgoing nodes. So we first have the node that is labeled epsilon, the root, that has A, B as its children. Then we have uh, this node that is just label A, so we have A, B, C, then, and so on. It can also be seen as a case, a subcase of the Willow graph, which I thought would be interesting to mention. And also in the paper, we mentioned, we prove the results for uh, uh, the general case, the general Willow graph case, and then apply it to the XBWT. Then our approach is quite simple. The idea is that Okay, but if we have the reads that correspond to a specific known assembled genome, could we use the genome as an additional context for better compression? So in the example, this just means, okay, we take the always the same reads, we align them, and uh, we create this tree structure where we have the original genome in the medium and the reads branching out of the the main trunk. And this, the, the XPWT of this tree gives us, uh, is this and has only seven runs, which is the same as um, the, the BWT of just get a get a cut without the dollar. And this is no surprise because we can actually prove that if we create such a tree where the reads are errorlessly sampled and aligned to the reference, meaning there are just no difference between the main branch and the reads, then the XBWT of the tree has the same number of runs as the BWT of the reverse of the reference. Then we also show in a paper, uh, this is just a preprint that I'll link at the end of the presentation, um, that if uh, it's a such a level to uh, is there an issue? Everything seems to be going well. Um, yes, sorry to interrupt yes. you, but it looks like there are some uh, internet connection problems, and so at a certain okay. point, uh, the slides have been stuck, so we have not been able to look at the last few slides, I don't know many, and at the very end, uh, your screen share disappeared. Okay, so uh, I'm already try in low band. Try to resume uh, your screen sharing, and yes, a suggestion is, can you lower the definition of your I've screen? already lowered the definition, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> So um, another another thing that you can try is maybe to turn off your webcam, turn off the image at least. Yeah, I think so. So think let's see that. if it if it helps. Okay. And uh, oh. Okay. So at what slides did I lose you? Because. Uh, uh, okay. No, I don't remember these slides. No, no, no. Yes, yes. Go ahead. But we also have a problem because on YouTube, uh, there, um, can you try to um, enlarge your um, PDF reader before sharing? Because uh, okay. otherwise, yes, now sharing and resume sharing, please. Uh, okay. Oh, but the thing is, I can't do it on. Uh, I can't do it on the sa at the same time. Uh, I'll try, but I don't think I can. Okay. So I can tr I can share my entire screen, but I don't think I can uh, else share. Let's the... try. 
I will tell you if there is anything that uh, is not. Let's see, because it's all okay. Okay, that's, is it okay? That, that's that's better. That's better because the problem is on the YouTube stream that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can imagine that it's only very uh, vertically. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, did no, you see I, the slide on the explanation of the XPWT? I don't remember this slide. I think you have to go back. Uh, yes, this one was no. Go ahead. This one. No, the, this one exactly. This, I, uh, at least to my uh, recollection, this one was the last slide. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start uh, a bit again. Let's just see, uh, uh, you. Okay. Uh, it seems that uh, somebody confirmed my uh, what, what I meant. Okay. So thanks. Thank uh, go much. ahead, please. Uh, so I'll resume here. Uh, I was explaining a bit uh, the XPW. Uh, and uh, it's better to resume there as uh, it's literally in the title of the presentation. And um, so this is the extended Burroughs Willow transform, but with the next, that is the generalization of the Burroughs Willow transform for level trees, where the characters get sorted um, according uh, to the level of their outgoing node. Uh, that, um, and uh, if we look at this tree now that you can actually see it. Uh, there is the root that is level epsilon, and um, the so we have the two uh, characters uh, following this node. Then the root level a, so we have a b c, then a a, and so on. The this uh, letter structure can also uh, be seen as a subcase of the Willow graph, and. Um, then our approach in this technique is that uh, if this uh, reads corresponds to a non-assembled uh, genome, uh, we can actually use the genome as additional context uh, for better compression. Uh, and uh, this means that in our example, okay, we can uh, have the reads aligned perfectly, and uh, this gives us this tree where the reads are just branching out of the main uh, structure from uh, from where the reads are extracted, and uh, then the XPWT of uh, T is this, which only has seven runs, which you can remember is than all the ability had. Then um, the, this is not a surprise because uh, we can show that if we create such a tree, meaning a uh, main reference and reads that are errorlessly sampled and aligned to the reference, then the XBWT of the tree always has the same number of runs as the BWT of the reverse reference. Then um, we also show a result for the graph, but here we apply it to the level tree. And uh, if we have such a level tree um, and we let R be the number of runs in the XPWT and T be the number of reads, then in space uh, R plus T, we can compute locate P in the size of P plus of runs plus uh, times a log log n factor. So, the problem with this is just that in reality, the reads we have to index are not perfectly matching the assembled genome. So how does this approach to compression work in practice? And uh, I first wanted to digress a little bit on the most technical part of this talk that is going to be mentioning that we actually choose to build the XPWT uh, via a prefix reparsing construction. So I think the next talk will be uh, focused more on this and uh, someone has brought this concept before. And just, I wanted to ex explain uh, quickly the three steps in the, we can have in the prefix repassing construction. First, there is a scan where we just slide a window onto the string, uh, compute the Kafkaian fingerprint of the window and the windows that have a, a a cap fingerprint module P of zero uh, are breaking windows that are going to determine different phrases in the text. And uh, all those phrases will be prefix repassing because of this uh, window construction. And so in our case, we 
scan the reference, creating a parse that is the uh, ID of the, fr the phrase and the dictionary that stores the uh, link between the ID and the phrase. And then for each read, we first have to extend the read so it starts with a window that had a, ha a hash of zero uh, and ends with that. So we keep the property that it's prefix free and then pass the extended read to construct the same path. Then uh, we actually build in the next step, we actually build the XPWT of the parse. And then in a the final step, we build the uh, suffix array and the longest common prefix for all the suffixes of the words in the dictionary and for each suffix we add the correct, or, the correct character depending on the cases. But actually for this presentation and the experiment result this has no importance. Uh, as for now we only have uh, experiment results on the number of runs. So uh, the XPWT is always the XPWT the way we construct it is uh, not relevant for now. And uh, to compare only the number of runs and so the compression behind it, we compare to the EBWT. We always use the rope uh, BWT2 implementation to refer to, to use to compute the EBWT. And we compared it uh, to be fair with and without the dollar sign as our uh, approach doesn't have any dollar signs. Uh, then we compared it to Spring Plus Peter Venture, I remind that Spring is a reordering of the reads that um, uh, improves the, uh, the, the diminishes the number of run lengths, uh, still with and without the dollars, and the R law uh, plus the BWT with R law is reverse lexicographic order um, that is also supposed uh, heuristic to improve the number of runs. So, what we found is that the number of runs was always greater in the EBWT, then a little bit lower in Spring plus EBWT, but then much lower uh, in ILO plus EBWT. So in the next graph of comparison, we always compare ourselves to ILO plus EBWT. Then uh, we compared our uh, the two implementation and the, two, the number of runs in the two implementation on several data sets. First, a synthetic one where we could generate the reads and have a controllable error rate. Then uh, on um, real words, and but only the reads that match it to the genome and not to the reverse complement of the genome. This is important because the reads tend to have uh, more error towards the end. So when a classic aligner uh, aligns to the genome, those, you know, those uh, reads that map to reverse complement of the genome get reverse complemented and the error um, then uh, are at the beginning. So for now, we put them aside as the solution in long term will be to index those uh, to another tree that has the reverse complement as the main track, but for now we just leave them aside. Then uh, E. coli has, uh, we, the real world data set that we used is E. coli from the single cell data sets, Staphylococcus aureus from the single cell data set, and hydrophilia from the GHB data sets. I'll first start by showing you the result on the synthetic data. To be a bit clearer, we generated this synthetic data with a WJSIM, um, and we traced it for various error rates between 0 to 2 percent. And uh, we generated always uh, 20 million reads and of length uh, 100 base pair. Uh, by default, there are 15 percent of the polymorphisms that are in DELs and with their lengths drawn, uh, drawn them, uh, from a ge geometric distribution. So we have this graph where we can see that for 0%, E. coli is just the, um, the, the sequence from which the reads were extracted by WJSIM. Then uh, we had uh, a very good compression, uh, much, much better as it's in million of runs. Uh, you can already notice that uh, removing the reads is already quite a significant change and uh, it's important uh, to not to compare. And um, then for various error rates, we still do better 
uh, we didn't go above two percent but for two percent we do better also it's interesting to know that on the chromosome 19 that we also start we we do uh, much better um, and um, and we are happy to see that uh, yeah, only on synthetic data but still um, Is there a new issue? Yeah, okay. My screen sharing stopped, no? Okay. That's a bit annoying. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No problem. It's Can not your fault, my internet connection is bad. It's, uh, yeah, but uh, we, we lost only the, the, the few seconds, a few last seconds. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Almost everything was fine. Okay, then I'll restart uh, sharing. Okay, share. Yes, just a few okay. seconds, just to be sure that on YouTube uh, we can read it fine. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I'm causing you so much trouble. Uh, the so we are happy to see that uh, even for two percent we are doing better which is uh, way above uh, the uh, commonly uh, assumed uh, error rates of the four tweets that is generally 0.1 percent then uh, there are experimentation on the real data and as always real data is a bit more complicated and uh, we are still doing better on the E. coli data set. We are doing slightly better on the Staphylococcus uh, data set, but quite similar. And uh, interestingly enough, we are doing very, quite bad on the hydrophilia uh, aligned to the um, genome assembled by Abyss. And we are doing better on the uh, on the uh, alignment to the reference, but that's also biased because not all reads get mapped. So the reads that get mapped we do manage to compress a little bit more. We do not exactly have an, an explication for uh, uh, the hydrophilia results um, because the, there is a better liner uh, than this, but it still gave some results. So if you have any idea, we would be ha very happy to know. Um, still, uh, for the coli data sets, uh, just removing the dollar signs decreases the number of runs uh, by 16% and then moving to the explainability reduces by 8.3%. So we think it is still a valuable option to consider. And then it's a very early work. Uh, there is quite a lot of uh, to do on the experiments. Uh, first is an evaluation on maybe uh, the human genome, as uh, we expect there will be less diversity in the genome, so it should be beneficial for uh, our compression that needs to be as close as possible to the uh, main trunk of uh, our tree. Then there is the actual FM index construction that hasn't been implemented and its time analysis and also the time comparison of the uh, prefix free construction of the PWT compared to other construction of the ability like PWT channeling or with assault. And uh, I wanted to finally mention that uh, we can uh, see a possible application of this idea to the hybrid index uh, because this picture from a, a, drawn, a paper on journal 3 studying T by René and David Wies and Knut Reinert uh, is quite similar and um, we think it might be interesting to consider sorting the expedibility of uh, uh, storing the expedibility of uh, journal string tree rather than uh, storing the BWT of a string kernel. So thank you a lot for your attention and your patience with the technical difficulty. The te takeaway message is for compression, really consider removing the dollars. It's important. And uh, taking advantage of the genome for additional context can bring a much better compression. And it's a trade con to consider. Uh, you can access the pre-publication here or via the QR code. And if you have any question, I would be very happy to answer that. Uh, thanks for your talk. And uh, I'm uh,
especially impressed by how you coped so graciously with the internet connection uh, issues. So I'm uh, asking if there are any questions. I'm going to wait a little bit because uh, also for last talk, uh, questions have been a bit slow to arrive. And I Travis can always manage to find a question, but he's on the paper, so it makes sense. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop sharing screen. Yes, so that's uh, okay. So I can see no question even on YouTube. So thanks again for your slide and uh, sorry. Thank you. Okay, no, no, one question. Did you try the, this approach for long reads? Uh, not yet. Um, the. Uh, I think it will really. I don't know long reads. Uh, uh, as well and uh the question is uh depending on the error rates and how uh where the error occur uh, this is going to be uh, uh the continuing point to apply to long read i think thank you a lot for your question okay thank you very much